All right, guys, I just wanted to show you a video of the Old Town uh, Sportsman Autopilot 120. I've had it since July. It's now September, so I've had it about two months now. I just wanted to give you guys a walkthrough of how I had it set up and touch on some things and some impressions on uh, what I think about it so far. But first, I'm going to show you the setup, and then we'll... we'll uh, talk about the actual kayak itself and and what I think so right here in this hatch is where I run the uh the only thing I keep in there is the 10 amp hour Nakwa battery and that runs the uh Garmin Equimap 73 SV it's a few years old still works great love the love the Garmin fish finders I did have to Go with the hobie through hole here instead of what normally comes there with the old town one just because the wires are a little bit thicker and it and just the caps on the end of the wires wouldn't fit through um fit through this through hole so i went with the hobie one over there just drilled the hole out a little bit more um we got the 45 pound thrust Minn Kota eye pilot right here um i love this setup i love how easy it is to pull it up and deploy it when you're coming in shallow you just pull the rope and you just want to make sure you just want to make sure you have it up forward like that because if you let go it does fall back in back into the cleat and can catch so just make sure you walk it down or throw it forward like that and it'll go all the way up on its own really nice setup i like that a lot um, as you can see you do have to get this boat registered at least in virginia i know most states are like that um, I got my Ram X grip here and my Yak Attack Roto grip here. So when I'm paddling, I just have it like that and I just lay the paddle across, but I'm not paddling all too often. Um, I am a huge fan of the Super Stick. Right now, this is the Power Pole Micro. Um, this is the Ultralight Pole. I just have it on there just because it's light. Um, but if I'm going to plan on be using this a lot, I take this just because it's light and just in case I need it. But if I know I'm going to need it a lot, I take the super stick. A, it gives me an extra foot. B, I can use it as a stand-up paddle with that paddle adapter that I showed y'all on a video a while back. I might touch on that in another video. And it's just more sturdy to push pull and do everything like that in. So a lot of benefits to the super stick over this one. But when I'm not thinking I'm going to need it all too much, I throw this on there just because it's so light. And I just have that screwed right in there. It doesn't get in the way of this. As you can see there, it doesn't get in the way. It doesn't interfere with the cup holder that way. And it doesn't interfere with rod holders or any of these cubbies or tracks or anything. Or this rod holder here or these tracks back here. So this seems to be a really good spot. And it doesn't interfere with my tackle, which normally goes here. Um, I'm playing around with the Yak Attack Black Pack that I've already owned. It's got the new canoe hinges on it for all my every, uh, all my tackle and rods and all that. I have played around with the idea of just putting Yak Attack rod holders on the tracks and having my entire tank well open and just leaving tackle in this cubby here. And I actually really do like that. But I'm just playing around and doing some different things. I'm using the Yak, pack, the Yak Attack Black Pack right now. Um, so these are my two life jackets. If it's super hot, I'm going to use the inflatable, but, uh, spring, fall, winter, I'm going to be using the, the new NRS Chinook. Um, just gives me places to keep my phone and stuff like that. Okay. So now I usually would run a 100 amp hour lithium, um, battery by Amped Outdoors and the most I've gotten it down to is probably 60%, and I fished for five hours. You could probably fish for 10 to 12 hours, and I was using full speed a lot of the time, and you can get even more if you decide to bump that back a little bit, and maybe instead of going four miles an hour, go like 3.5 or 3.6, 3.7 on like setting seven or eight, and you'll get a lot more battery life out of that. Yep, and so uh, this is how I, this bungee right here, I made this little bungee, shortened it, and uh, put it back in there. 
even got the matching orange with the boat so this keeps my seat from flying up when in transport so that i can leave my seat on there i've got it buckled in the back it's not going anywhere i've got the hobie bag seat bag on the back and the top velcro works fine but the bottom velcro doesn't have anywhere to go so i put another bungee from this bar to that bar there and just strapped it to that and it works great and i actually keep my donkey leash and all that on there so that's nice and out of the way as far as the seat goes i really like the seat um it's not too much on the adjustable side but it is super comfortable one thing one mod I, to the seat i did do is added these little sea deck or marine mat pads a for sound dampening when you're standing up and sitting down you're not smacking the kayak hole plastic on plastic and b um just so it wouldn't dent or crack from sitting down really hard and over time so it makes it quieter and it protects the the whole plastic from the seat and you just flopping your weight down on it and i put that in the high and low position so no matter if i'm sitting in a low position I'm, it's probably because i'm duck hunting and if i'm sitting in the high position i'm fishing so i will have another video on the duck hunting setup of this uh kayak i'm still working on that this will be my first year uh hunting out of the old town so i'll have another video on a duck hunting setup for this kayak and then you have your little you have your plate right here if you decide to go paddling you can leave your battery and your uh motor at home you can put this paddle in or put this plate in where the motor goes and you're all good i keep my net right here it is leashed with one of these fed through there and i just have a carabiner tying it to the bungee on the net uh i may end up switching the nets out just because i lost a nice four pounder the other day just because i couldn't reach it with the net because the handle's so short so i either i may extend that or either just sw switch it out with a different net so um back here i don't really have anything on the tracks although i may put yak attack uh, rod holders back here just to get rid of the uh black pack and have a big uh, more room in the tank well so back here i used to have a power pole micro anchor and with spot lock i just wasn't using it a whole lot and that's another battery i have to worry about charging it's more weight and just a lot more hassle than i thought was needed with this boat with the spot lock on there and if i want a shallow water anchor i can just throw this on the side and the rare case that i needed i have it so I actually sold that to offset the cost of this boat. So I don't have a power pole micro anchor anymore. I don't feel the need for it on this boat. Um, we have our tow flag. I just put a bungee, tied a knot, hooked it with a carabiner to that. And that stays on there. I just flop it up when I'm not using it. Got a bending branches uh, angler ace paddle. So I have it set to 255. I really like that length on this boat. Um, I think it works well, especially just for me. But I do have a Scotty mount here for a camera pole when I do film. And then on this, I have my little boomerang line cutters just clipped to this bungee. And most of the time it's secured under here like that. That's one of the cons to this boat is that's that not opening all the way but um so i keep the remote the lanyard the key the registration card all that stuff in there my phone my wallet keys all that stuff when i'm on the water i don't really use this hatch it's just dry storage for this stuff when i'm not using it and for my pocket stuff when i am on the water um there is another hatch under here I don't really use that at all. It's just a, uh, it's just a uh, access point for me. And then I have another line cutter ring on the bar right here. So if I need it, I have it just in case this, for some reason, gets blown off and transferred or whatever. Um, up here, I've got a Yak Attack um, retract bungee thing. I forget what it's called, but it mounts to the track. And then I have my 
cast king pliers on that again with another line cutter so plenty of line cutters on this boat and then i've got my fish grips with another bungee there and they just stay there um in the bag i've got a first aid kit uh spare prop pins stuff like that uh a scale bogo grip scale um just random stuff that i don't really need access to but gotta have on the water then again the garmin echo map 73 sv and that's just your plug for the uh, trolling motor but that is it that's, that's how i have it set up obviously i would carry a cooler or you know whatever i need that day right here it's just extra storage space um yeah I, i'm keep trying to keep it pretty simple i know my kayaks in the past have been over the top on stuff i bring and even with this black pack i'm bringing more stuff than i really want to um if i didn't bring the black pack basically i'd have my soft plastics in a bag like this just sitting in the back and my four tackle boxes would be on that side of the seat and then my rods would be on the tracks so i'd have the whole tank well basically for a cooler whatever else i want to bring and uh, maybe a dry bag with camera stuff and um and my soft plastics the rudder's great i love the mechanism on the rudder so no ropes to pull and cleat and all that stuff you just well you got to undo the bungee first you kind of just flip this down and flip it back up as you can see the little spike right there does not get in the way or hinder that in any way shape or form i love the front rod holders here i usually put a ram one like a ram tube rod holder on my right side because i do reel left-handed and so when i get the fish in i usually fight it on this side over here on the left side of the boat and i will bring it in and i set my rod there so that's convenient i like that better than the 106 the 106 only has it on this side um, and that's because the throttle is on that side so for me reeling left-handed it's nice to be able to just set the rod that's already in my right hand on the right side and i'm fighting the fish on this side normally and uh it's worked out really well for me don't really use this I use this for like bottle caps hooks stuff like that don't really use this this is just kind of where the uh handle to the pull cable goes when it, when uh when in use and yeah other than that i'm really digging this boat i got it on scratch and dent and as you can see i'm gonna show you a few of the scratches so that's one right there i don't even know you can it's a little dent right there and there's another one somewhere oh there, it's right there right beside my busted finger right here it's really hard to see i mean there really wasn't much damage at all to this boat and i saved i think three no, i saved four or five hundred dollars on it all things considered taxes and everything so well worth it um for me and i i mean i probably would have paid full price for this boat and i have put a cap at three thousand dollars prior to this so um, I do think this is worth more than $3,000. So I, I would pay full price for it after using it for sure. Um, I'm glad I got it on such a good discount, especially with the very minimal damage that it had done to it. So basically what happened was this was shipped out to a customer, this and another one. The other one got really damaged, but they couldn't just keep one. So they sent both of them back and this one had very few dents and stuff from shipping. And I just went locally and picked it up. Um, other than that, the, bo the boat works great. You, um, you do want to put door ease on the shaft. It makes it a whole lot easier. That's just like wax stuff here. It makes deploying the motor and pulling it up so much smoother and easier. Um, this thing works great so far for me. Um, I, it's only two months old, so time will tell how long this thing lasts. But... For the two months that I've had it, it's worked great. And 
I've had no issues with it really. Um, the only issue I really had was this this handle pulled right off, and I just had to rerun the rope, which was easy to do on the water. As you can see, I just popped this little gray panel off the handle. It's just held in by two clips, and then you just run it through, back through, tie a knot, and good to go. And since I did it like that, I don't know originally how they had it, but since I did it like this where I fed it back through, so it's fed through this side, then back around, and then back in on the side that it's coming out. So it's really tight, and then I tied a knot. So since I did that, it's great. Um, pedals, maybe, I mean, works great. The rudder, I haven't had any issues with the rudder. I know some people, the, the screws are backing out on them or whatever. I haven't had any issues with that. I don't know if that was like an early model thing or just all of the autopilots, but mine's fine so far. Really digging this boat. Um, it's made a believer. Made a believer out of me. Oh, there. I just found another little dent there. I don't know if I did that or if that was done in shipping. But, so yeah, this boat's really made a believer out of me. I was a little skeptical of the old towns. Um, then I got the 106. Really enjoyed that boat. Uh, we, my wife tried it and fell in love with it. So I was going to get another 106. Came across this on a deal and bought it. So... And I've been really happy with this. Um, the iPilot remote is a lot easier to get used to than I was thinking. I really do like the throttle system on the 106. But the iPilot is no big deal. That's a small trade-off for me to get spot lock with the iPilot. Just forgot to include this in the video. This is the card I'm using for the uh, Autopilot 120. And this is a Wilderness Systems cart. You see there, I think it runs about $150 to $200, depending on which wheels you get. Um, I found this open box for $150 with the beach wheels. I think that's normally $200. Works great on the 106 and the 120, as well as many other kayaks, and it is totally adjustable. As you can see, those knobs down there and allow you to adjust the width of these two bars, and it works great. Um, if it's a little wet out or if you're just coming off the water, you just take a cam strap and run it underneath there over the kayak and tighten it down. That keeps the cart in place. But I forgot to talk about this. Just wanted to insert it in the video. I'm about to get a, go to a fishing trip tomorrow morning. Just wanted to shoot this video before I go fishing and load her up on the old Tundra. Uh, let me know if you want to see a video on the Tundra. I haven't really talked about it other than the bed setup that one video I had. But if you want to see like a build video or a walk around video of the truck let me know i know people love their tundras like i do but hopefully you guys enjoy